I'm Dave Ferreira, founder and principal of uh, Fourier Automation. My friends call me Dafer, and uh, you can feel free to call me Dafer also if you like. Um, you know, I study economics, but I have worked in the software industry for over 25 years now. And uh, there's one topic that seems to fascinate software engineers all over, which is um, the software that took uh, Apollo astronauts to the moon and back safely. Um, they like to talk about that quite a bit. Um, how was it written? How many lines of code are there? Um, how was it debugged? Things like that. Um, I don't have the answers for you <laughs> for that today, but in today's video, I'm gonna explode that topic. If you're anything like me, you're gonna find this really fascinating. Um, today, we are going to explore the software that's used in modern NASA spacecraft, uh, the onboard software. Do you know that you can download the code that controls uh, spacecraft um, to your own home computer and you can build it and run it on your home computer? You don't need any special coding skills. You don't need any special tools. All of that is available for free. And um, if you don't have a Linux box uh, to do it on, I say Linux, but really it's, it's to be run on any POSIX compatible operating system. Um, typically that means Linux or some real-time operating system. Um, everything you need to do this on your home computer is available to you at no cost in the public domain. While we're on that topic today, we're not gonna be discussing any proprietary or government secrets or classified information. Everything we do today is carefully vetted to make sure that we are only discussing um, public facing NASA software and public facing information from NASA. Um, so, Watch with confidence. Don't don't worry about any uh, violations there. Okay. Um, so again, uh, today I'm recording this as the um, founder of uh, Fourier Automation, and I'm inviting you to celebrate the launch of Artemis One next week uh, by installing, building, and running NASA's Core Flight System. Okay. So first, a few preliminaries. Um, who is this video aimed at? This video is aimed at students interested in a career in aerospace or space flight um, software. Uh, it's also might be useful to experienced software engineers who are looking for a way to get into embedded systems or are just curious about embedded systems. Uh, it would also be interesting to serious rocketry hobbyists or entrepreneurs who want to take their development to a commercial level. Um, or developers who are currently working on a, a CubeSat or some other spacecraft, and maybe they want to investigate whether they should switch over to using NASA's core flight system. What will we need today? Uh, today you'll need a PC running Linux or some POSIX compatible OS like Linux or Raspberry Pi OS or, or uh, a PC, maybe a Windows or an Apple laptop that is capable of hosting a Linux virtual machine or a Raspberry Pi virtual machine um, locally. That's what, or if you have access to some virtual machine that's not local, that you can install and run software on, that would also be fine. So what is CFS? CFS is a system, uh, it's not an operating system, it's a code base for a layer that would run on top of an operating system. Um, and the programmers would 
code within the context of CFS. And then they would run what's called the CFE, which is the core flight executable. And the core flight executable would, um, at, at boot, it would load the modules that are created by the developers and it would execute them in one ongoing loop. Um, if you're familiar with Microsoft's .NET framework, then it might be helpful for you to think of CFS as parallel to that for embedded systems that would run in Linux or an RTOS onboard um, a uh, spacecraft. As you might imagine, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I say this with great affection. I worked at Microsoft for 10 years. Um, the .NET framework is absolutely massive in comparison to the uh, resource requirements of CFS. Um, we're talking about a very, very sparse, lightweight framework uh, that the embedded developers would, would run against. Uh, again, by the way, NASA makes this code framework, the code base for the framework and the framework um, available to the public for free. And again, nothing we discussed today is proprietary, corporate or government secret or classified information. Okay, I uh, just want to reiterate that. Um, so again, you can think of CFS as a framework or a software layer designed to run on top of embedded POSIX OS, Linux, um, or it could be some RTOS, generally speaking for life support tasks, uh, devices typically operate on a real-time operating system. So let's get started. If you're still on board, um, in the description below, I've placed links to uh, some videos that you'll need to do before we start our steps. And I've placed a link to uh, the blog post that's used as a companion to this video. Uh, what you're going to do first is going to go fire up your Linux machine, or you're going to go to the videos I've linked to that will show you uh, if you don't have access to a, a Linux machine, or Raspberry Pi, what you'll do is go through, choose one of those videos that shows you how to install VirtualBox and how to um, create either a Linux or a Raspberry Pi virtual machine on your Windows or iOS machine. Um, I would like to note one thing before we get started. Raspberry Pi OS may be mission critical to certain viewers who maybe are working with CubeSats or that's the only machine they, the only hardware they have handy, so they want to learn. But there are a couple of few critical steps to make this tutorial work on Raspberry Pi that are not necessary on, for example, Ubuntu Linux. So if you don't have a compelling reason to use Raspberry OS, Raspberry Pi OS today, then I would strongly encourage you to choose the Ubuntu Linux virtual machine or a Red Hat machine or something like that that runs standard Linux. Um, in case you do have a compelling reason to choose Pi OS, I am going to go through those steps and I am going to run this tutorial on a Raspberry Pi virtual machine. So you will get those steps that are critical to you running this. So uh, let's get started. Um, I'm gonna share my screen and um, get this show on the road. Okay, here we are. So what we're looking at here is what you're gonna see after you've installed uh, VirtualBox and um, created either a Ubuntu or a Pi OS virtual machine or both as I've done here. So the instructions, these steps are gonna be virtually the same for both. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are a couple critical steps for running this on Pi OS. What we're gonna do is 
we're going to use Pi OS, and I'm going to tell you what steps you can skip if you're using Ubuntu Linux. Other than that, they're nearly identical steps, and even the interface is nearly identical. So what we're going to do is we're going to boot up our Pi OS machine. This is going to take a few seconds. Um, I'm not going to give you lessons on how to use a virtual machine, but um, so here we are. And um, the first thing that we're going to do is open up our command prompt. Linux people call this a terminal. Windows people know this as a console or a command prompt. So if you'll notice, first thing you'll notice is that you are by default at the um, home directory. And you can confirm that you're at the home directory when you see this tilde right here before the command prompt. It's a little bit different in Ubuntu. Don't worry about that. It's the tilde that's important. It tells you your, your command prompt. If you do a quick list directory, you'll see the directories that are in your home folder. So let's treat this as our home location for now. Before we get started, uh, let's go ahead and let's install a few things. Um, we're going to use the uh, Linux automatic installation facility. And those commands are going to look like this. They're in the blog, so you can read along with me. Sudo means super user do. So when you put sudo before any command, it, it means do this as a super user or with the maximum privileges. So first we're gonna install Git. Don't worry about you already have it installed or it may be installed by default. Don't worry about that. If you run this command, if it's already installed, it'll just update it. If not, it'll install it for you. So um, so as it says here, it's already installed the newest version. If it weren't, it would have updated it. Let's go ahead and install something called make. This is a technical executable that will, um, it's important in building software. You may see something different uh, if it's not already installed, but don't worry about it. Now let's install the new C++ GCC. All of these things are available for free and open source. So, uh, far, sorry about that. We need to also install CMake. Oops, sorry about that. And the last thing we need to install is the uh, new compiler. All right, now we've got all our tools installed and let's go ahead and let's make a directory to put our source code because um, we're gonna actually download two different source code repositories um, and let's call it SRC. It's good to keep this name very short and whether you're in Windows or Linux. Um, so now let's navigate over to SRC and you can see there's nothing in it. So now we're going to go ahead and we are going to grab the uh, NASA um, CFS repository and we're going to download it here. Okay. And we're going to use git to do that. So the command looks like this git clone https. I've done this so many times, I know the URL by heart.
Now, we are going to NASA's official public-facing GitHub repository, and we're going to clone that onto this machine. You'll notice there's no passwords involved here or anything like that. And you can go to that page, the beginning of that URL, and you can see and look at the code online if you so desire. But uh, I'm reinforcing that none of this is classified or proprietary in any way. It's public facing. So it's going to do a little bit of stuff here. And it's going to go a lot faster than you would think because it's not downloading the entire project. As soon as this is done, we are going to go and do a little bit more to get the entire project downloaded. We're going to migrate into navigate into that directory. Um, and then we're going to do um, git submodule. You know, it's really useful to use your tab key here to make sure that you uh, get things right or um, but, but it is case sensitive. If you type some first letters of whatever the command or, or directory that you're trying to access, and then you hit the tab key, it automatically types it out for you. So in a project like this, where we're trying to carefully follow steps, and it's a good idea to, to use that facility of Linux to make sure that we get everything right. First, we're gonna do the submodule init. That's very fast. And then we're gonna do git submodule uh, update. Now, this is going to pull down the bulk of our of the CFS repository. Um, when you clone in Git, what you're doing is taking a remote repository and you are um, copying it locally. Now, in this case, um, you would not be allowed. NASA, I'm sure, would block you from actually making any changes with Git that would change anything on their public facing um, uh, GitHub repository, that would be insane. So I'm confident that they don't allow anything like that. So you don't have to worry about making any mistakes here with Git and accidentally changing a file up there at NASA. So it's all good. Um, now, I'm gonna pause here a little bit. Um, if you're using Ubuntu Linux, you don't need to do the steps I'm about to do. I'm going to try to use the chapter links in the description so that you can skip this part. These next steps are only for uh, Pi OS users, Raspberry Pi OS users. Five minutes later. I paused to figure something out with this repository, the third party repository, but um, I think I got that straightened out now. So what we did already, what we successfully did was we brought down, we cloned the NASA CFS GitHub repository. And now we're in our source directory again. And uh, there's the CFS directory. And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go and uh, clone the uh, scripts that will make the adjustment for um, Pi OS. So again, you don't need to do this if you're, if you're using um, uh, Ubuntu Linux. But from our source directory, we're gonna uh, do a git clone. Uh, let's see, it is um, MBR4477. Install dash CFS dash rplay dot get. And that's going to clone the. Um, the script directory right here. Let's take a look at that it's there. What we're gonna do is execute that script. So source 
install, install. And this is gonna create another CFE directory that we're gonna move over to that project. This script also appears to, um, to do a build. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is, you notice that it deposited us in a different home directory over here. So what we're gonna do is just CD, that's gonna take us back to our home directory, our actual home directory. So, now, if we go to SRC, you'll notice there's a CFE directory in the SRC, and we are going to move that to our CFS directory with the copy dash R command, parent CFE. E to local CFE. Then we are going to copy the make file up from there. Again, if you're on Raspberry Pi, make sure your capitalization is correct with the capital FE, C capital FE. And we're gonna copy the sample depths directory from there also with the dash R. And then now we're back to the normal Linux commands. We're going to do make simulation equals native prep. All right. And then we're going to do a make and make install. And we're going to CD into the build directory, executable, CPU1. So it's there. Okay. Then we're going to run this local core CPU1. So this last line stop flywheel, that is normal. And uh, it, will, it will start up every, at a certain frequency. And uh, if we sat here for a while, you would see, well, you would see nothing except it's starting and stopping flywheel. So it is running. This is, this is what it looks like. It's not running any of the modules that we can see output from but it is successfully running. So what we're gonna do now, the next step is we are going to kill it with a control C, All right? That's a normal shutdown. Now we're gonna to go to our source code and we're gonna make some changes to the source code that we can observe. So I'm gonna bring down the file explorer. That's what it's called, file manager in Linux. It's called file explorer in Windows. And we're going to go and make an edit. Make sure we're in the right directory here. It's CFS directory. And we are going to go into the um, apps folder, sample app, 
FSW, source code. And we're going to edit um, sample app dot C. And this is a C program. And what I'd like you to do, so search for um, run loop. And it brings us right here to this while loop. We're gonna add a print statement to the um, success statement. If status equals CFE success, after it processes its commands, normally what we're gonna do is add a printf statement. I start with a properly formatted C statement. And what I'm gonna say here is five angle brackets to get our attention. And I'm gonna type something like go Artemis. Hello, Orion, to the moon. I'm gonna close it with five angle brackets. The purpose of these angle brackets is just to get our attention so it makes it clearly visible. I'm also gonna escape in a line return here using a C escape sequence. You don't need to understand what that is. It just puts everything on a new line. So each time it runs that line of code, it does it on a new line. Um, that's just to make it more visible, get our attention, easier to read. So now we're gonna save this file. Okay. We're gonna go back. We'll leave that window open, but minimized. We'll leave this window open, but minimized. Now we're gonna go back to our CFS directory and we're gonna do another make. And make install. Okay. Then we're going to go to our build executable CPU one. Now, when we run this core CPU one app, we should see our print statement. Uh, repeating in the main loop. And what's happening there is that the core flight executable is running. And when it boots, it will have loaded our sample app. And our sample app will be called at a certain frequency that will print out. And when called successfully, it will print out uh, the line of code, the line, the text that we just put in our print statement. So there it is. Go Artemis, go Orion to the moon. So what we just did, just to run over what we just did, was that we downloaded NASA's CFS code repository from GitHub. And then we went through steps to build the sample application. Raspberry Pi users used a different set of steps, some additional steps that were very complicated, but um, they're documented there now. Uh, and then we copied a couple, a make file and some sample definitions, and we did a build. And we have executed the sample app as it was written. And then we went back in and we edited the sample app and we built it again. And we're executing it successfully here uh, on Raspberry Pi. It's a whole lot easier to do this on Ubuntu Linux, but I wanted to get these steps in for Raspberry Pi users because that is the more real world scenario uh, on an on a entry level. Uh, you know, NASA is not going to use Raspberry Pi on their human crewed spacecrafts, but there will be CubeSat developers and rocketry developers uh, 
uh, entrepreneurs that are using Raspberry Pi on their CubeSats and some rockets. So I wanted to make sure we included that in this demo. So what we've proven is that you can download the CFS code base, build it, run it, edit the sample app and do whatever it is you want to do and then build it and run that code change. What am I going to do next? So in, in the next video, I'm hoping that I, I've already done this, but it's, it's very complicated, but I'm hoping that I can walk someone through not just editing the sample app in place, but uh, creating a new sample app or duplicating the sample app with a different name, different file names, and tie that into the existing build, see, make, make, and uh, build instruction scripting so that you don't have to do all that from scratch. Um, and, and I'm hoping that we can make that easy enough for someone to do at home, starting where we left off with this video. So don't delete anything. If you're interested in going further with this, stick around, don't delete anything. Save your machine current state by closing it and saying save the machine state, okay? If you reboot, that's not a problem, but it's easier to start from here. And, uh, so that's today's demo tutorial. Thanks for watching. And I hope that um, you'll uh, come back and uh, look at the next video. It should be available in a couple of weeks, okay? Thanks a lot. Have a great day.